I don't know of published scientist who come out and say that there is no evidence for any biological influence on sexual orientation. I have not met any. So I think uh, we're, we're, in, we're in the realm here of there's a lot of evidence for biological influence and still a lot to do in understanding how it works. I started about now seven years ago to um, look into just uh, regular gay men and lesbian women and just uh, and ask the question, well, how is it that uh, 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 this small percentage of the population is attracted to same-sex partners? What's going on in their brains? Is it something that's genetic? Is it something that goes by hormones? And I, um, I started uh, recruiting subjects uh, in gay prides or other events and, uh, and started asking them for access to their DNA and then just test scientific hypothesis as in, well, is, is there any evidence that uh, uh, there could be a, a, a biological cause? There are parts of the brain that are more activated or less activated between men and women. But strikingly again, um, gay men have in certain regions of the brain patterns of activation that uh, uh, looks more like, the, like uh, the pattern of activation that's seen in straight women. So, and it's certainly different from, uh, from the pattern of activation that you can see in straight men. So, what it suggests is that there is a, um, um, a, a biological underpinning. There is something that has changed the brain probably during development uh, of gay men and lesbian women that makes their brain um, not only look differently anatomically but also functionally. It functions differently. Based on research done um, with intersex children uh, who are female genetically, but who were exposed very early on um, as in as fetuses in, in the womb of their mother, they were exposed to very high um, doses of male hormones, testosterone. Um, when these children are born and are being followed up, they identify as women, but they do have, uh, on, um, on average, um, two things happening. One is what we call their gender role is more masculinized. That just means that their, their interest in toys, occupations, manner of dress, uh, is is more masculine than than typical, but also there is a, an increased percentage of these girls who've been exposed to very high doses of testosterone that uh, um, in fantasy and sometimes in in actual uh, uh, sex act uh, are uh, are homosexual or lesbian women. There is this idea that maybe um, at each male pregnancy, uh, the mother is producing some kind of an immune response. Like, think about it as, as uh, uh, the response to vaccination shots. Uh, there is this, this uh, uh, male fetus in her body, and the female body of the mother sort of reacts to it. And at each new boy that the mother has, maybe the immune reaction becomes stronger and maybe it interferes with, uh, uh, with the masculinization of brain development. That's a hypothesis. Uh, so we don't know, again, the mechanism, but we do know that older brothers uh, do uh, influence the likelihood 
of um, being gay. Identical twins are much more likely to have a, a co-twin, their brother, to be gay if they're gay compared to fraternal twins who only share half of their genetic material. And this difference uh, between the rate of concordance between identical twins and fraternal twins really clearly demonstrate a genetic influence on sexual orientation. The twin studies do, do not show that it's 100% genetic. They just demonstrate that there is a genetic influence. Uh, there, there could be other influence on sexual orientation. Um, some of them might be environmental. Uh, for instance, the, f the older brother effects is an environmental influence. That's what has happened uh, in the past uh, in the same womb seems to influence uh, the sexual orientation of, of future pregnancies. So it's certainly not uh, a, uh, an, an all or nothing phenomenon. For all sorts of traits uh, th that are clearly genetic, uh, the, the twin studies do not show 100% of concordance. I'll uh, give you uh, examples of if people look at obesity uh, or autism, uh, looking at twins, there is undeniably no one will even challenge that there is uh, um, uh, a genetic cause for uh, both obesity and autism. We don't know how it works very well, but the twin studies uh, are certainly not at a hundred percent. So what those studies just show very clearly demonstrate a, a, a genetic effect, but biology is complex, so it's going to be more than just one factor. For the purposes of sexual orientation, every time researchers have looked at influences of the um, uh, sort of broad external environment, the macro environment, so for instance family structure. Uh, is it true that uh, single mothers uh, are more likely to raise gay kids, for instance? That would be an influence on in the environment. Well, you can actually test this hypothesis and it's been done uh, by uh, uh, teams of the Kinzer Institute and there is absolutely no evidence uh, that this kind of environment, the family structure, influences sexual orientation. Um, the environment could be past sexual experience, whether pleasant or unpleasant. Again, this has been studied and, and there is no evidence that that is the case. Um, child abuse, you can ask um, gay men or lesbian women uh, if they've been uh, abused uh, sexually, and if you do that, and do that in a control group of, of uh, straight men and women, you actually find that there is no evidence that this kind of environment changes your, or is associated with a different sexual orientation. Mm -hmm.